Hello, I'm Robert Bastian of Laryngopedia and Bastian Voice Institute, and my subject is oculopharyngeal muscular dystrophy and its effect on swallowing. It's also known as OPMD. Now, our practice at Bastian Voice Institute is a dedicated laryngology group. There are three physicians and a physician assistant, and we're focused exclusively on voice, swallowing, and airway disorders. And so because of the the focus on swallowing, we've had the opportunity to evaluate and treat individuals with OPMD. While our caseload is small, because this is a very rare disorder, we've learned some useful things that I'd like to share. First, one of the early signs of OPMD is often difficulty swallowing, typically beginning between the ages of 40 and 60. The underlying issue is gradually progressive weakness in the pharynx, the throat muscles, responsible for propelling food downward. They, they squeeze downward. And it also includes the cricopharyngeus muscle weakness, uh, a sphincter at the top of the esophagus. So to put it simply, the pharynx acts like a pitcher or as a part of the pitcher mechanism propelling food downward. And the cricopharyngeus muscle is like the catcher. It must relax. It's located right about here. It must relax, open to allow food or liquid to pass into the esophagus. And in OPMB, both the pitcher and the catcher can weaken, but interestingly, difficulty with solid foods often shows up before problems with soft foods and liquids. And so that pattern suggests that the cricopharyngeus muscle's failure to relax is frequently the first noticeable issue. And we've seen that on video fluoroscopic swallow studies that's a moving or a video x-ray of the swallowing mechanism. Well, what is the strategy? If you or a loved one has OPMD and is experiencing swallowing difficulties, the first step is to find a doctor specializing in swallowing disorders. He or she will meet with you, hear your story, do an office examination of your throat and swallowing using blue stained applesauce, a cracker, and blue stained water. That's a procedure called the video endoscopic swallow study, or VES. And I think that that is one of the better ways to test the propulsive side of swallowing, the pitcher. Then comes another test that's also pretty good at evaluating the pitcher, but it also does a better job of evaluating the catcher. And so in that uh, study, it at first they give you uh, liquid barium, which is a white material, radio-opaque material, barium, a teaspoon, a little bit of a barium puree, and then barium on a cracker, and they're watching the shadow of that material going through your throat. And it looks at the propulsive side and special attention to the cricopharyngeus muscle. Well, suppose you see that propulsion is adequate, but the sphincter isn't opening properly, then you become a candidate for a procedure called cricopharyngeal myotomy. This is a laser procedure typically performed through the mouth under a short general anesthesia. Most patients stay in the hospital just one night, and I've created a separate video that explains that procedure in detail, and you can find the link below. Well, I remember my first OPMD patient, and I approached her with some caution uh, but in her situation, the myotomy ended up being very effective, and she experienced significant improvement that lasted for several years. And as always in medicine, individualization is the key. If the primary issue is the non-relaxing sphincter, then treatment can bring real benefit, the myotomy. If a myotomy has already been done and swallowing remains difficult, then focus shifts to swallowing therapy diet modifications, and other adaptive strategies. Well, if you'd like to learn more, uh, feel free to explore our resources on Laryngopedia or consult with your nearby swallowing specialist about getting a swallow study. And thank you for watching.